joining me today. <laughs> My name is Sunny. Welcome to Oil for the Journey. And we are here. It is day eight. Thank you guys for your patience with me. As you know, I am working the foreground and the background. <laughs> and it's all good. Oh, you guys. So just wanting to, you know, Welcome you guys here to day eight. We're reading Joshua seven through nine, and we are following the Bridges for Peace Ignite the Truth Bible reading plan. All right. And if you guys want to join us on any given day, you can still sign up. You can scan this QR code. It'll take you right to the form that will allow you to join in with me. I hope you were able to catch yesterday's reading when I had Olivia and Peter. Um, Olivia is from the South South Africa and Peter from the UK. And they joined in um, yesterday as we read through Joshua chapters four through six. So this has really been... Um, Wow, heart like deep changes. Like, you know, you read the word all the time. It's this same stories over and over again. But I'm just so grateful to God for what he does and how he speaks newness, right? New things, or he just reiterates things or shows me things that we never seen before, you know? And so this is these are these opportunities as we are taking moments to be intentional just to read to, through God's word, not necessarily having um, an agenda of our own, but just saying, you know what, I just I just want to spend some time with you and whatever happens, happens, right? Sometimes that's good to just be spontaneous, even in our earthly relationships, right? Taking moments to just be with people and just allow whatever happens, the good, of course, <laughs> to enjoy those moments, right? So uh, we want to remind you guys about what we're doing. This 40-day journey is called Life In by God's Word. And again, Life In is our daily encounters that require us to expend massive amounts of energy, right? Whether we judge an experience to be good or bad, that life experience requires us to spend ourselves emotionally, mentally, physically, spiritually, financially, intellectually, and socially. So that's what it is to be living life, right? We're life and but now when we're life and by God's word, we're doing all these things, but we're choosing to trust God and his holy word to lead God direct redirect, influence, and encourage our daily lived experiences, whether they be good or bad, because to be near God is for our good. And he is trustworthy. We know that all things, he causes all things to work together for good to them who love him and to them who are called according to his purpose, right? So we're really into 
understanding the full scripture, taking it into context. And remember, it's not just power in us, but it's God's power. It is God himself, right? He causes all things to work together. So, all right. So let me just digress, change, switch up for a little moment. (laughs) So we're in chapters seven through nine today in the book of Joshua. I am reading uh, from the New Living Translation today. If you want to follow me, follow along with me in this specific translation, we're going to be reading through about um, how AI defeats Israel. So Israel is still on this journey, right, of actually occupying and taking um, ownership of the land that God has promised them, right? Um, Those who are now west of the Jordan. So the tribes, Gad, Dan, Manasseh, who were east of the Jordan, they have, they've claimed their land. So now those warriors have to come with the other tribes west of the Jordan to claim the territory that God has promised them. So here we are, and let's go ahead, let's pray before we start reading. (laughs) All right. Father, we know you are here because you live inside of us, but we are intentionally inviting you, Lord, to have your way. Even as we read your word, God, I thank you that you will um, illuminate something that we've never seen before. God, that you would inspire us with your truth, inspire us with your love, inspire us with your, by your holy, your holiness, right? And that we would be compelled um, to come closer to you. As you said, men ought always to pray. We are to always pray. Because there's something always to pray about. But I thank you, Lord, even speaking to my heart that the the truth of the matter is, is that we don't have to become overwhelmed by the fact that there's always something to pray for. But we can take joy in the fact that we can come to you, Lord. And like Jesus said, when he walked to Lazarus' tomb before he told him to get up, he said, Lord, I thank you that you hear me. So, Father, we thank you that you hear us even now, God, as we're praying to you, Lord, as we're taking time to spend time reading your word, just to just to be with you. But I thank you, God, that even these moments, even when we don't have an agenda, we don't have we don't um, have full understanding of what's happening. God, you are faithful to speak to us to encourage us, to to plant seeds, to water other seeds. Lord, and if not this day on another day, you will bring the growth of what was planted and what was watered because you are maturing us. I thank you, Lord, that in all of our getting, we will get understanding. And I thank you, Lord, that for those who need to be reminded of how much you love them, even when you discipline them, or discipline us, thank you, Lord, that that love is known, that your love is experienced, and that we are holding tight to you. So thank you for this moment in your word. Speak to us, God, our hearts are ready to receive. We pray that we have a will to obey you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you all, yes, let's get started. <clears throat> Joshua 7. But Israel violated <clears throat> the instructions about the things set apart for the Lord. Excuse my voice. Mm-hmm. A man named Achan had stolen some of these dedicated things. So the Lord was very angry with the Israelites. Achan was the son of Carmi, a descendant of Zimri, son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah. 
Joshua sent some of his men from Jericho to spy out the town of Ai, east of Bethel, near Beth Aven. When they returned, they told Joshua, there's no need for all of us to go up there. It won't take more than two or 3,000 men to attack Ai. Since there are so few of them, don't make all of our people struggle to go up there. So approximately 3,000 warriors were sent, but they were soundly defeated. The men of Ai chased the Israelites from the town gate as far as the quarries, and they killed about 36 who were retreating down the slope. The Israelites were paralyzed with fear at this turn of events and their courage melted away. Joshua and the elders of Israel tore their clothing in dismay, threw dust on their heads and bowed face down to the ground before the ark of the Lord until evening. Then Joshua cried out, O sovereign Lord, why did you bring us across the Jordan River if you are going to let the Amorites kill us? If only we had been content to stay on the other side. <sighs> Lord, what can I say now that Israel has fled from its enemies? For when the Canaanites and all the other people living in the land hear about it, they will surround us and wipe our name off the face of the earth. And then what will happen to the honor of your great name? But the Lord said to Joshua, get up. Why are you lying on your face like this? Israel has sinned and broken my covenant. They have stolen some of the things that I commanded must be set apart for me. And they have not only stolen them, but have lied about it and hidden the things among their own belongings. That is why the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat. For now, Israel itself will be set apart for destruction. I will not remain with you any longer unless you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. Get up. Command the people to purify themselves in preparation for tomorrow. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. Hidden among you, O Israel, are things set apart for the Lord. You will never defeat your enemies until you remove these things from among you. In the morning, you must present yourselves by tribes and the Lord will point out the tribe to which the guilty man belongs. That tribe must come forward with its clans and the Lord will point out the guilty clan. That clan will then come forward and the Lord will point out the guilty family. Finally, each member of the guilty family must come forward one by one. The one who has stolen what was set apart for destruction will himself be burned with fire along with everything he has, for he has broken the covenant of the Lord and he has done a horrible thing in Israel. Early the next morning, Joshua brought the tribes of Israel before the Lord and the tribe of Judah was singled out. Then the clans of Judah came forward and the clan of Zerah was singled out. Then the families of Zerah came forward and the family of Zimri was singled out. Every member of Zimri's family was brought forward person by person and Achan was singled out. Then Joshua said to Achan, my son, give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, by telling the truth. Make your confession and tell me what you have done. Don't hide it from me. Achan replied, it is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 silver coins and a bar of gold weighing more than a pound. I wanted them so much that I took them. They are hidden in the ground beneath my tent with the silver buried deeper than the rest. So Joshua sent some men to make a search. They ran to the tent and found the stolen goods hidden there, just as Achan had said, with the silver buried beneath the rest. They took the things from the tent and brought them to Joshua and all the Israelites. Then they laid them on the ground in the presence of the Lord. 
Then Joshua and all the Israelites took Achan, the silver, the robe, the bar of gold, his sons, daughters, cattle, donkeys, sheep, goats, tent, and everything he had. And they brought them to the valley of Achor. Then Joshua said to Achan, why have you brought trouble on us? The Lord will not bring trouble on you. And all the Israelites stoned Achan and his family and burned their bodies. They piled a great heap of stones over Achan, which remains to this day. That is why the place has been called the Valley of Trouble ever since. So the Lord was no longer angry. Joshua chapter 8. Then the Lord said to Joshua, do not be afraid or discouraged. Take all your fighting men and attack Ai. For I have given you the king of Ai, his people, his town, and his land. You will destroy them as you destroyed Jericho and its king. But this time you may keep the plunder and the livestock for yourselves. Set an ambush behind the town. So Joshua and all the fighting men set out to attack Ai. Joshua chose 30,000 of his best warriors and sent them out at night with these orders. Hide in ambush close behind the town and be ready for action. When our main army attacks, the men, the men of Ai will come out to fight as they did before, and we will run away from them. We will let them chase us until we have drawn them away from the town. For they will say, the Israelites are running away from us as they did before. Then, while we are running from them, you will jump up from your ambush and take possession of the town. For the Lord your God will give it to you. Set the town on fire as the Lord has commanded. You have your orders. So they left and went to the place of ambush between Bethel and the west side of Ai. But Joshua remained among the people in the camp that night. Early the next morning, Joshua roused his men and started toward Ai, accompanied by the elders of Israel. All the fighting men who were with Joshua marched in front of the town and camped on the north side of Ai with a valley between them and the town. That night, Joshua sent about 5,000 men to lie in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the town. So they stationed the main army north of the town in the ambush west of the town. Joshua himself spent the night in the valley. When the king of Ai saw the Israelites across the valley, he and all his army hurried out early in the morning and attacked the Israelites at a place overlooking the Jordan Valley but he didn't realize there was an ambush behind the town. Joshua and the Israelite army fled toward the wilderness as though they were badly beaten. Then all the men in the town were called out to chase after them. In this way, they were lured away from the town. There was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who did not chase after the Israelites. And the town was left wide open. Then the Lord said to Joshua, point the spear in your hand toward Ai, for I will hand the town over to you. Joshua did as he was commanded. And as soon as Joshua gave this signal, all the men in ambush jumped up from their position and poured into the town. They quickly captured it and set it on fire. When the men of Ai looked behind them, smoke from the town was filling the sky and they had nowhere to go for the Israelites who had fled in the direction of the wilderness now turned on their pursuers. When Joshua and all the other Israelites saw that the ambush had succeeded and that smoke was rising from the town, they turned and attacked the men of Ai. Meanwhile, the Israelites who were inside the town came out and attacked the enemy from the rear. So the men of Ai were caught in the middle and Israelite, with Israelite fighters on both sides. Israel attacked them and not a single person survived or escaped. Only the king of Ai was taken alive and brought to Joshua. When the Israelite army finished chasing and killing all the men of Ai in the open fields, they went back and finished off everyone inside. So the entire population of Ai, including men and women, was wiped out that day, 12,000 in all. 
For Joshua kept holding out his spear until everyone who had lived in Ai was completely destroyed. Only the livestock and the treasures of the town were not destroyed. For the Israelites kept these as plunder for themselves as the Lord had commanded Joshua. So Joshua burned the town of Ai and it became a permanent mound of ruins, desolate to this very day. Joshua impaled the king of Ai on a sharpened pole and let him left him there until evening. At sunset, the Israelites took down the body as Joshua commanded and threw it in front of the town gate. They piled a great heap of stones over him that can be seen today. Then Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, on Mount Ebal. He followed the commands that Moses, the Lord's servant, had written in the book of instruction. Make me an altar from stones that are uncut and have not been shaped with iron tools. Then on the altar, they presented burnt offerings and peace offerings to the Lord. And as the Israelites watched, Joshua copied onto the stones of the altar the instructions Moses had given them. Then all the Israelites, foreigners and native born alike, along with the elders, officers, and judges were divided into two groups. One group stood in front of Mount Gerizim, the other in front of Mount Ebal. Each group faced the other, and between them stood the Levitical priests carrying the Ark of the Lord's Covenant. This was all done according to the commands that Moses, the servant of the Lord, had previously given for blessing the people of Israel. Joshua then read to them all the blessings and curses Moses had written in the book of instruction. Every word of every command that Moses had ever given was read to the entire assembly of Israel, including the women and children and the foreigners who lived among them. Joshua chapter 9. Now the kings west of the Jordan River heard about what had happened. These were the kings of the Hittites, Amorites, Canaanites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites who lived in the hill country, in the western foothills and along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea, as far north as the Lebanon mountains. These kings combined their armies to fight as one against Joshua and the Israelites. Sound familiar? But when the people of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and Ai, they resorted to deception to save themselves. They sent ambassadors to Joshua, loading their donkeys with wet, weathered saddlebags and old patched wineskins. They put on worn out patched sandals and ragged clothes. And the bread they took with them was dry and moldy. When they arrived at the camp of Israel at Gilgal, they told Joshua and the men of Israel, we have come from a distant land to ask you to make a peace treaty with us. The Israelites replied to the Hivites, how do we know you don't live nearby? For if you do, we cannot make a treaty with you. They replied, we are your servants. But who are you? Joshua demanded. Where do you come from? They answered, your servants have come from a very distant country. We have heard of the might of the Lord your God and all he did in Egypt. We've also heard what he did to the two Amorite kings east of the Jordan River, King Shihon and Heshbon and King Og of Bashan, who lived in Ashtaroth. So our elders and all of our people instructed us, Take supplies for a long journey. Go meet with the people of Israel and tell them we are your servants. Please make a treaty with us. This bread was hot from the ovens when we left our homes, but now, as you can see, it is dry and moldy. These wineskins were new when we filled them, but now that they are old and split open, and our clothing and sandals are worn out from our very long journey. So the Israelites examined their food, but they did not consult the Lord. Then Joshua made a peace treaty with them and guaranteed their safety, and the leaders of the community ratified their agreement with a binding oath. 
Three days after making the treaty, they learned that these people actually lived nearby. Mm. The Israelites set out at once to investigate and reach their towns in three days. The names of these towns were Gibeon, Kephirah, Beeroth, Kiriath, Jerim. But the Israelites did not attack the towns for the Israelite leaders had made a vow to them in the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. The people of Israel grumbled against their leaders because of the treaty. But the leaders replied, since we have sworn an oath in the presence of the Lord, the God of Israel, we cannot touch them. This is what we must do. We must let them live for divine anger would come upon us if we broke our oath. Let them live. So they made them woodcutters and water carriers for the entire community, as the Israelite leaders directed. Joshua called together the Gibeonites and said, why did you lie to us? Why did you say that you live in a distant land when you live right here among us? May you be cursed from now on. You will always be servants who cut wood and carry water for the house of my God. They replied, we did it because we, your servants, were clearly told that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you this entire land and to destroy all the people living in it. So we feared greatly for our lives because of you. That is why we have done this. Now we are at your mercy. Do to us whatever you think is right. So Joshua did not allow the people of Israel to kill them. But that day he made the Gibeonites, the woodcutters, and water carriers for the community of Israel and for the altar of the Lord, wherever the Lord would choose to build it. And that is what they do to this day. Wow. <sighs> so amazing. I think all three of these um, chapters can really just be summed up in the second half of verse 14 here from chapter nine. It said, but they did not consult the Lord. Um, it was, the situation was different in chapters seven and eight, right? Because God had already stated what could and what could not happen. But unfortunately, Achan allowed the uh, lust of his flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. You know, sometimes we think things are better or could be better, and we're not satisfied. We're not content with what we have or where we are. And we always want more. And then even when we get what we want, I, I beg to ask, like, are we really still satisfied? Are we content? No, I don't think so. I've had plenty of times <laughs> where I purchased, made a big purchase and was like, okay, thinking I'm going to feel all this excitement and or things are going to be different now. It's like, mm, it's still the same look, but a different day, <laughs> right? So con contentment truly does come from the Father and spending and just being with him and trusting him knowing that he will always meet our needs. He will always supply and that we really don't lack anything good. <laughs> and then here, the situation with the Gibeonites and how they were tricked, right? They were deceived. I mean, these people, they pulled out all the stops. They had the torn wine skins. They had raggedy clothes. They brought moldy bread, like... <laughs> They, they had it down to the detail. And so, yeah, the Israelites, Joshua and all of them, they inspected the food. They inspected their clothes. And, you know, sometimes we can look at things or look at people and say, okay, this is legit, right? Facts. <laughs> Don't let me go there, right? But facts, even facts can be fabricated, y'all. Anyway. I'm going to let the Lord talk to you about that because ultimately the bottom line is 
they didn't consult the Lord. And had they consulted the Lord, regardless of what the facts looked like, they would have known who these people were and that they they needed to be ultimately obliterated. So, you know, our our this is as much for me as I know it's for y'all, right? Because I'm in this life too. I'm in this world living it with you guys. We're life and by God's word. Every day we have choices to make. And it's like, whose report are we going to believe? We're going to believe the report of the Lord. We're going to believe God's word. Are we going to listen? Are we going to be patient? Are we going to wait? Are we going to trust him with all of our hearts and not lean to our own understanding, regardless of what things look like, regardless of the facts? God is God and there is no other. And that's where we need to get back to. So that's my prayer, Father. Thank you, Lord, that we are not in this life alone. God, thank you that um, your grace abounds in, in our lives, even when we're making our decisions. I pray, Father, that we learn not to just lean to our own understanding, lean to the facts that we're reading or seeing. But God, that we learn to lean into your Holy Spirit. Father, have your way lead us. Help us to understand, even when we disagree, like you're holy. But I thank you, God, that even for us in this day and age, your grace does abound all the more. Because the truth is, Lord, you've been showing a lot of mercy. Because so many of us have not received what we deserve. But that's because you're so amazing because you are slow to rise. It is your will that all would come to repentance. So I thank you, Lord, that this word is encouraging. It is empowering because you're you're saying for us to return to you, to, to pray to you. Like we were talking at the beginning, there's always something to pray for. And it's not that we should allow ourselves to become overwhelmed by the things in life and by situations and circumstances and troubles and trials and tribulations. But the fact is we can come to you and you hear us. Man, that's amazing. You hear us. And not only do you hear us, God, but you're answering us. You're working on our behalf. You're helping us. You're sustaining us. You're empowering us. You're encouraging us. You're strengthening us, oh God. And we thank you, Lord, that we are not living this journey of life on our own, but you are with us and you will never leave nor forsake us. <laughs> so we thank you, Lord, that you would show us if we need to repent. Lord, show us what we need to repent of, to turn away from. Lord, to surrender, to give up and draw closer to you. Show us how to draw closer to you. And we thank you for this, Father. And we pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, y'all, that was a lot. And I know that, um, you know, it can seem overwhelming, but you're not alone, you know, and we want you to know that we are here with you guys. We're doing this together. You know, life is not meant to live alone, but, you know, you can hit us up on any one of our social media platforms, at Oil for the Journey on Instagram, Facebook, X, and YouTube. You can also email us at oilforthejourney at gmail.com. All right. So remember, God loves you with an everlasting love. Sometimes 
it will require us to be disciplined, right? Because he wants us to, he wants, he's put so much in us. He's given us so much and he wants us to fully function and flow in who he called and created us to be. Not a fabrication, but the real you. But that's only revealed through knowing him more. All right. If you guys got questions, hit me up too. <laughs> All right. We love you with the love of the Lord. God bless your day this day. May you have his peace. In the name of Jesus, his peace that surpasses all of your understanding, that it will also guard your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. All right. God bless you. Shalom, shalom.